Am I the asshole for not letting my daughter choose the theme to her birthday party? I, 29, am the mother of my daughter, Kira. She just turned 6 this past weekend and we had a party with her extended family and friends. Unfortunately, the party was less than her expectations and she hasn't shut up about it and I'm afraid I might have done something wrong. I mean, that's a little mean. A few weeks ago, before buying themed invitations and decorations, I asked my daughter what she wanted the party's theme to be so that I could buy the themed invitations and decorations. She said she wanted an Isabella themed party, the name of a minor character in the recent Disney film Encanto. I tried to dissuade her from this idea for two reasons. Reason one, which I told her, is that there probably wouldn't be many decorations to buy that centered around the character. Reason two, which I did not tell her, is that I would have intense secondhand embarrassment and surely feel judged by my family who definitely wouldn't be familiar with such an obscure and uncomfortable recent Disney installment. I'm sorry, is it your family's birthday party or your daughter's? Like, why do you care what your family thinks about what her theme of her party is? Half the time, my parents don't know what my nephew's and niece's birthday party theme is. They just see like a big blue hedgehog. They're like, what the hell is this? I'm like, oh yeah, it's called Sonic. They don't know this stuff. They don't care as long as the kid is happy. Secondhand embarrassment. Like, you suck it up and you do it for your kid. Like, huh? Ultimately, Kira was completely unhappy with her Disney party and the guests weren't much happier. Kira's school friend's mom confronted me after asking my daughter why she had been crying the whole time and in short, gave me hell. My mother offered to throw a party at her own house the next day and she'd buy every Isabella thing she could find at the store. On the condition that she bring my daughter and I don't show up at all. But I declined and kind of faked a seizure to avoid any further attacks because I was just completely exhausted. Everyone left while my daughter's face was covered in cake and tears, but mostly anger. I was just trying to do the best for both my daughter and myself, but everyone ended up disappointed in me. So, am I the asshole? See, here's the problem. You just said, I was just trying to do the best for both me and my daughter. You don't do the best for you. You do the best for your daughter. Do you know how many embarrassing stuff I've done just to make my nephews and nieces laugh, to make them happy? Like, you shouldn't care what other people think. Like, that joy the child has on their birthday. Like, I'm recording this right now, and it's my nephew's birthday, and there's a Sonic theme party in there. And if he, if I know if it made him laugh or made him happy, I would dress up as a Sonic and do a dance for him. Like, that's what you do for kids. Like, it doesn't matter. People who make fun of you for doing those kind of things, they're bad people. Why would you make your kid cry on their birthday? You're definitely the asshole here. Am I the asshole for telling my coworker the hand-me-downs she collected for my toddler were disgusting? So my coworker contacted me to let me know she had some hand-me-downs that my toddler was welcome to. She said the clothes were in play condition and had some stains but were very well loved. Now I do not mind stains or worn clothes for my toddler. She probably just dirty them up herself anyway and also she'll run through these clothes so quickly. I picked up the box and there were some really cute clothes, however, folded in was a black pair of pants. I held them up to take a look and noticed it was wet. I took a sniff and immediately smelled a diarrhea poopy smell. Am I the asshole for telling my coworker the hand-me-downs she collected for my toddler were disgusting? I told her I found a pair of pants with actual wet, seemingly fresh poo stains folded neatly into the pile. I told her it was disgusting and please check clothing properly before handing them off to someone. I said I appreciated the clothing but it's really not okay. But I heard from other colleagues she's going around calling me an ungrateful asshole and saying that I said the clothes were too old and nothing about the poop stains. My husband wants me to cut ties with my best friend because she's now in an open marriage. I, 28 female, have known my best friend Sammy, 28 female, since our freshman year of college, about 10 years. I'm married to Mark, 31 male, and Sammy is married to Tom, 30 male. Mark and I have been together for four years, married for two years, and Sammy has been with Tom for seven years, married for four years. Sammy has been having a very difficult time for the past couple years. She had discovered that Tom had been having numerous affairs both before and after their marriage and was in the process of getting her ducks in a row to leave, finances, lawyer, etc. She had even secured an apartment with her family's help and was about to move when Tom was in a very bad accident and severely injured. The accident was entirely his fault, a one-car accident while he was driving drunk, on the way back from seeing one of his affair partners, no less. Out of compassion, Sammy decided not to leave Tom while he was recovering from his injuries, both because he was on her health insurance and because he needed a lot of help with doctor's appointments, physical therapy, etc. Since then, Tom has had numerous surgeries and isn't yet able to work because he's still recovering his energy and mobility. In the meantime, Sammy is working two jobs to replace Tom's income and pay for the portion of medical bills not covered by insurance. Fairly early in his recovery, Tom admitted everything he had done and said that he wanted to change and repair things with Sammy. 
and Sammy thought that she owed it to him to try. However, she discovered a few months ago that although he wasn't having physical affairs, he had been continuing to have sexual conversations and emotional affairs with women online. At this point, Tom admitted that he wasn't wired for a monogamy and suggested an open relationship. Sammy didn't really want this, but again, she felt she owed it to Tom to not divorce him until he was recovered enough to work and support himself, so she reluctantly agreed. She hasn't gone on dates or anything yet, but she's thinking about starting to try and meet some new people. My husband, Mark, doesn't believe in open marriages and thinks that marriage requires monogamy and that anything else is cheating, even if the married couple fully agree otherwise. He wants me to end the friendship with Sammy because she is now a cheater in his view and thinks that she'll influence me to cheat or want an open relationship as well. I think this is extremely unfair and is only trying to make the best of a bad situation and she hasn't even dated anyone yet. The alternative would be either for her to suffer while Tom continues to have affairs or divorce Tom now and leave him without a home and insurance before he can take care of himself again. Mark is now saying that this is a deal breaker for our marriage and that I have to choose between him and Sammy. I feel sick over this because I made vows to Mark but I don't think Sammy is doing anything wrong under the circumstances and she needs her friends more than anything right now. What should I do? Story time about when I found out I was a ghost. As a kid, I kind of had some sensory tactile issues and told my parents that I would not go to camp because I refused to sleep in pants, pajama pants. They're just not comfortable. My mom is not dissuaded, buys me full-length white floral nightgown, sends my ass to camp. At camp, I couldn't sleep, so I would lay in bed for a while, awake. And then I got up and walked around. One of the camp counselors found me, assumed I was sleepwalking for some reason, and returned me back to bed. I'm not sure why she assumed I was sleepwalking, but I didn't want to get in trouble so I did not correct her. Since I had gotten away with it, I did this a few more times. Get up, wander the woods, get ushered back to bed. This was not very safe and was probably a big worry for the camp counselors. Fast forward to adulthood. I'm chatting with someone who went to the same camp, on the boys' side, a few years after I did. We discuss some of our memories of the camp. I don't disclose the sleepwalking thing, but we do discuss some of the camp's other quirks. He then tells me about a camp ghost story of a little pioneer girl who wanders the campgrounds at night. She was moving west with her family in a covered wagon, but died. Her ghost still wanders, looking for them. He told me that several boys claimed to have seen her with their own eyes. I asked him what she looked like, and I'm sure you know the end of the story. I am the ghost that haunts the camp. Am I wrong for removing my daughter's bedroom door because she won't stop slamming it? I, 40 female, have three kids. Maggie, 14 female, Levi, 12 male, and Charlie, 10 male. Levi and Charlie share a bedroom and Maggie has her own room as the oldest and also only girl. Maggie is a great kid. She does her homework, helps with chores without too much complaint, doesn't bug her little brothers too much. The issue is that she will not stop slamming her bedroom door. When she gets up to use the bathroom at night, she slams her bedroom door on her way out and back in. When she gets up in the morning and goes to bed at night, she slams it. Pretty much any time she enters or exits her room, the door gets slammed. And it's only her door, none of the other doors in the house. It shakes the walls and frequently wakes up everyone else in the house. Her brother's room shares a wall with hers and our bedroom is directly above theirs. We've talked to her about it and asked her very politely to please be more mindful about it because it is disturbing the rest of us, but it's in one ear and out the other. We try being more forceful about it, saying that if she continues to slam her door, there will start to be consequences. Still, nothing changes. It all came to a head the other night when she got up to use the bathroom and all four of us were woken up by the slamming. I have to be awake at 5 a.m. for work and I've had enough of the broken sleep and came downstairs and knocked on her door. She opened it and said, what? With such an attitude and it took a lot of self-control to not start yelling. I told her as calmly as I could that if she slammed the door one more time, she was going to come home and find it gone. She proceeded to yell at me to leave her alone and then slammed it five times as hard as she could. Well, the next day, Friday, she went to school and my husband and I both had the day off so we took the door off the frame and installed a curtain rod with nice heavy curtain over the door instead. She came home and freaked the fuck out. She said we were being emotionally abusive and taking away her right to privacy. She sulked all weekend and won't talk to us now. My mother says I'm the asshole because I overreacted but she doesn't have to deal with the house shaking. I want to add that we completely respect each other's privacy in our house, which is why we hung up a heavy curtain and made sure that we couldn't see through it or around it. We even put little velcro pieces on the walls and curtain sides so it stays in place. She still has her physical privacy, which she is absolutely entitled to, but can't slam a piece of fabric. We also have never and still don't just go into her room unannounced and still knock on the wall to ask permission to enter. We've told her we'll happily put her door back on once she agrees to respect the no slamming rule. So, am I the asshole? My aunt went to her ex-boyfriend's wedding. My youngest aunt from my mom's side is a disappointment from the family. 
Like, even my parents tell me not to become like her. My maternal grandmother hates her, but she's the kind of woman I want to be when I grow up. My aunt is in her mid-30s now. She has a lot of tattoos and piercings, dyed hair, and played the drums. She is a bartender in a pub, and she loves her job. But the reason no one talks about her in the family is because she's lesbian and she lives with her lover. So, last year, after a bad mental breakdown, I begged my dad to take me to her place. I had dropped out of my final examination, and I was in pretty bad condition. That's when she told me the story. So, be before she was dating her now girlfriend, she was dating this guy who she dreamt of spending her whole life with only to find out he slept with his coworker. After a year of their breakup, the homeworker comes to my aunt and gives her a wedding invitation and rubbing it into her face that she was pregnant. Well, the catch is, my aunt said gleefully that her ex was infertile. Him and my aunt had been trying to have a baby to no avail and hence they went to a doctor. And the test results were sent to her. So her ex didn't know he was infertile. She said she didn't tell him out of spite, but boy did it play out good for her. Her ex was Christian, so they did not have a typical Hindu wedding but the ones they show in English movies. My aunt talked to her ex's brother and convinced him to play a part in her revenge. The brother was up for it apparently. So at the reception, there are this walk down the memory lane kind of event where they show pictures of the couple. So after a few cute pictures, a picture of the homewrecker with another man kissing pops up. And then another and another. And as the bride was in a frenzy, the test result shows up on the screen and the slide stops. A written note saying that the groom was infertile. And boy, the aunties at the party were all in for the drama as the groom looked utterly humiliated and the bride was in tears. This is what you get for messing with the woman's true feelings. Man, I love my aunt. She's a badass.